Hel Hello YouTube. Um, today we're going to be going over like the mega main lines of the Alp and Sicilian, sort of the modern main lines today, the things that people try today to try to get an advantage um, in the C3 Sicilian with the white pieces. And if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. So anyways, let's dive right in and see how we're supposed to face this with the black pieces if we want to at least try to equalize or at the very least just not end up that much worse. So after e4, c5, we're going to have c3. This goes into the Alpen, knight f6, e5, knight d5. And now instead of, you know, doing early craziness with g3 or anything like that, we're just going to dive right into the main line. We're going to play pawn to d4. And again, as previously discussed, black should capture, c takes d4. And then we're going to have uh, white try knight f3, knight c6. We're going to have white play bishop to c4, knight b6. And now the move that people have been trying in modern practice is no longer bishop b5 since this move is known to basically completely equalize for black, but instead retreating this bishop to b3. So here, uh, the main move is just to play pawn to d6, and now white kind of has two options. White can take this pawn on d6, or he can take the pawn on d4. Um, those are basically the two main options. He can play cd4 right here, and then black has to decide what he wants to do here. Uh, or he can play ed6, in which case black pretty much only does one thing. Black plays queen takes d6. So the uh, variation with the ed6 and queen d6 is probably, out of all the variations, it's kind of the least uh, menacing for now. Uh, for example, after castle's kingside, the move that's been kind of known to equalize uh, for a while is the move bishop to e6. Now it's interesting to note here, there is another interesting possibility and this other interesting possibility has always been my preference but the move is a little suspect i think that bishop e6 is honestly the move that everybody should be playing here g6 is also possible um and these positions are somewhat interesting so what i like about g6 is if they do nothing if they just hang out and let you finish your development with like bishop g7 etc uh, you get a very comfortable position, uh, similar to to other uh, positions that you can sometimes get uh, within these variations, like in early e takes d6 lines uh, where they've played c takes d4, for example. And so if they just play really passively, if they play c takes d4, you can basically transpose to other positions that are really stable. Like you can just play bishop g7 and then say bishop e3, you can castle and Black has a super comfortable position here and it's doing really well. Actually, I would even dare say, you know, I'd rank it as high as slightage black. Like, I like black so much there. But the issue is, is if you play g6, the move knight g5 is very, very possible. And then you have to play e6, and then queen f3, of course, puts pressure on the f7 square, forcing queen e7, and then knight e4, and then you have to play f5. So you're ending up with a ton of weaknesses in black's camp. Now, you can still play chess like this, but black has to play really kind of cold-blooded chess. Um, I'll note that it's not possible, like you're not completely dead yet. They can't play bishop g5 because you do have f takes, and that is attacking the queen. So they ha they can play knight g5, though, and then you have to play the cold-blooded bishop g7. They're going to put pressure on that e6 square with rook e1, and then again you have to play another kind of cold-blooded move. You have to play cd4, and I mean dc3. And then without dc3, I think maybe black's position is like a lot worse with dc3 i think the position is extremely unclear so the idea behind dc3 is you want to kind of etch out this knight d4 square and if your knight gets to d4 with tempo it kind of defends everything in black's position and then you can just kind of start slowly pushing back the white pieces that's why white has to play bc3 immediately just to prevent knight d4 and um this was tried in uh uh Black tried this in Vaja versus Chernov in Romania in 1995. Uh, not 1990, yeah, 1995, and um, Black did horribly in that game. Like Black ended up losing, but it's not at all clear that Black should have lost. Like his his next move was okay, um, and then his move after that was disastrous. He played knight on b to c4, which just immediately loses uh, material. Apparently, according to the engine, uh, Black should just be lost. Uh, better is something like h6, and then we could have a very unclear position after, say, rook e5, hg5, rook e1, and then g4 would be relatively unclear. Although, I mean, it's it's really hard to assess a position like this where 
one side just has like a whole bunch of pawns but no development and then the other side has uh i guess an extra i don't know it's just hard to assess a position like this i don't know how to assess it <laughs> so i would just say unclear okay so this is unclear so fair enough okay so we're going to go back and just take a look at what is the main equalizing try here so the main equalizing try is bishop e6 uh knight a3 and then just um we can either play bishop takes b3 we can also try what uh vashir uh what uh ivanchuk played against vashir lagrave in 2016 that actually went really well we can try dc3 uh dc3 is another reasonable attempt and we can go uh uh, down the route of this game, which actually went really well for uh, Vasily. This went really well for Ivanchuk. And he ended up getting the uh, full point with the black pieces in this game. He actually ended up winning this particular game. Uh, he survived uh, White's attack, and then he ended up uh, being up material at the end of all this. And he's actually doing really well. So... You can see the game went a few more moves. White tried to sack an exchange to break through. He didn't break through. And then Ivanchuk was able to walk his king to the other side of the board. And now Ivanchuk is up a clean exchange and still up a clean pawn. So he went on. Uh, well, and this at this point, Vashir Lagrav resigned. Um, MVL just resigned the game. Um, I would say maybe more in the spirit of the main line was the game uh, between Vashir Lagrav and I think Magnus Carlsen, which was played in St. Louis in 2019. Magnus Carlsen just played Bishop B3 in that game, and after AB3, A6, Knight D4, he just drew really easily and really naturally. He just made it look really simple to get a draw with the black pieces. He basically just chopped wood. He just exchanged everything. And, uh, I mean, already, there's just nothing here. Um, you can just see for the rest of the game, he just put his pieces on supernatural squares in the middle of the board, which is just what Carlson does. More stuff got exchanged. I mean, just the king of chopping wood. All the wood got chopped, and, I mean, there's nothing left. Carlson is actually up a pawn here, so if anybody's going to play for a win, maybe it's Carlson, but... Uh, MVL managed to hold it, and um, this just ended in a draw. And that was uh, Vashir Lagrav versus Carlson in 2019. So Bishop E6 is really your your main attempt. Uh, you can play this. Uh, you can play this other line. Uh, like I said, you can play this other line G6 as possible, but it's just not supposed to be, um, you know, the best thing. So it's also possible. Okay. So what else can people do? if they want to try to play for an advantage. Well, another thing that people can try is they can try the immediate CD4, and then you're going to play D6. And then there's kind of, I would say, two moves that get played here. Um, there's Knight C3 is a definite possibility that you kind of have to have a little bit of preparation against. And then another move that people try is ED6. So ED6, and then we're going to have Queen D6, and then I mean, okay, I don't take this line terribly seriously with the black pieces. Like, once they play ed6 and I play queen d6, I'm not really all that frightened about what white's going to try at this point. Black is basically, against anything super passive, black is basically going to continue with the moves pawn to g6, bishop g7, castles. And against stuff that's a little bit more trying, we might decide to finish our development with something like e6, bishop e7, uh, bishop f6 if that's the way that we have to finish our development of course if at all possible trying to get our bishop outside of the pawn chain first so for example let's say knight c3 we're just going to get our bishop outside of the pawn chain bishop e2 and then we're going to play e6 and just hold the center of the board we're going to develop with bishop e7 bishop e3 castles queen b3 rook fd8 rook fb8 knight f4 this was a completely um equal position in Mom in Mamandaro versus uh, Avruk, uh, played in 2008. So that game continued d5, bishop f3, bishop f3, knight d4, and white had compensation for the exchange in the form of these pawns in the middle of the board. I mean, it's just a question of preference, which side you would prefer to play here. Personally, I would just prefer to have the extra exchange, but I don't know. Neither side could make progress, as it turns out. So game continued, king f8, and 
hands were shook, draws were agreed. But, I don't know. I probably would have played on with black. I like having an extra exchange. I think if anybody's better here, it's probably black. It's just a little bit better. But, okay, so going back, um, if they play really passive, if they play a move like bishop e2, uh, now I think we should just develop. We should play a move like uh, g6. So we should play g6, castles, bishop g7, knight c3. Now we should castle and do something along these lines. And actually, in this position, I feel like black is already, this is just slight edge black. We're just playing against an IQP in a really blatant, straightforward way. And I think black is actually just doing quite a bit better. So just to give you an example of how things could continue, we could just continue putting pressure on this d-pawn, continue developing our pieces to open lines. Uh, something like this would be huge advantage to black. We can see how these pawns have just been kind of destroyed, and we're still going after this isolated d-pawn. This is major advantage black kind of all day long. So the early e takes d6 lines aren't terribly uh, frightening. Uh, the only other attempt, we're going to have knight c3. And then in this position, I think uh, it's important to remember, there's kind of two possibilities. You can play an extremely ambitious and relatively untried approach, and that would be continuing with something kind of crazy like uh, knight c3, bc3, and then g6 is actually kind of playable here. It's a little unclear. And the reason it's a little unclear is because, of course, the idea of knight g5 doesn't work because there is no bishop on c4 to enforce that like there was in the other lines. So basically white's going to be stuck playing something like um, ed6, queen d6, which is very similar to some of the other main lines that we've covered previously. And black should have every hope of equalizing here. Or he's going to have to play the much more ambitious e6, which is kind of interesting because you, of course, can't play bishop takes e6 because d5 is a fork. So you would have to play fe6, and then you end up with a similar um, line uh, to some other uh, variations uh, that you can get to so, from some other positions. Basically, the idea is you're just going to continue, like, say, after bishop c4, you're going to just play, like, kind of cold-blooded chess, and you're just going to play in the middle of the board with, like, e5. There's actually another line that's very similar to this uh, that you can kind of get away with, uh, it's against the the bishop c4 line. So it goes, you know, basically kind of down this path with bishop c4 and then bishop to b3. And then after bishop b3, you can play g6. And this is kind of a similar idea, is after takes takes, a lot of times they'll play h4. And this is something that's well known to theory. You play e5, they take, you take, they take, take, and... I know I'm boring you to death with all these theoretical lines. Takes, takes, bishop here. And then the whole point is we're going to play king here, 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 and we're going to walk away with our king, and our king's going to kind of walk to safety on the queen side. And these positions are actually supposed to be better for black, um, interestingly enough, if you can get all the way to here. So th this line isn't terribly respected for white to go completely down this path, like once black plays g6. So he has to deviate and play something different. And the same thing can be said after this knight c3, knight c3, bc3, g6. I think at this point, white has to kind of deviate and play something different. Like after e6 takes uh, bishop c4, bishop g7, I think, I think we do have to kind of stay away from ideas like h4, for example. I don't think that this is going to be very good for white. But I think probably castles kingside. I think these positions are probably still likely slight advantage white. And just in general, uh, these positions after knight c3, bc3 are very dangerous positions for black to play. If you want to just equalize these positions very easily with the black pieces, the easiest way to equalize is just to immediately play d takes e5 in these positions. After d takes e5, black should be completely equal. But, I mean, uh, Alexei Shurov actually managed to win against uh, uh, Shveshnikov um, and Jermala back in 2016. That game continued like this. As you can see, after a few moves, black is just kind of completely equal. And um, then he managed to get up pretty strong pieces in the middle of the board after a few more moves. And he managed to get a really 
just nice position with all of his pieces. And White still ended up kind of with a weak king and with kind of weaknesses all over the board. And Shirov was able to exploit that and was able to go on and uh, win the game with the black pieces. So it is possible to go on and play for a win with black. But that's by far and away going to be your easiest way to equalize against this knight c3 move is just to play the immediate t takes e5. But it is also possible to get kind of creative and play knight c3, b c3, and then g6 and play this kind of very unclear position. So that move is that that possibility is also on the table and it's much lesser tried and much lesser explored. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess and I hope you can use these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.